Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about analyzing web logs. That's a really important skill that almost every security professional has to use at some point in their careers. Some of us use it every day, so it's no surprise that this concept often turns up on certification exams. Web logs record detailed information about requests made to a web server. These logs provide insight into who accessed the system, what resources were requested, how those requests were handled, and when each event occurred. Organizations rely on web logs to support performance analysis, troubleshooting, forensic investigations, and compliance reporting. Monitoring these logs helps identify unusual patterns that could indicate a security incident, such as repeated failed login attempts, requests to unauthorized resources, or large volumes of unexpected traffic. Web logs are stored as plain text files on the web server or in centralized log repositories. Most web servers use a standard format for these logs called the Combined Log Format, or CLF. These logs are human-readable and follow a consistent structure, which makes them suitable for both manual review and automated processing. Here's an example of one line from a CLF-formatted web log. In this format, each line in the file represents a single request to the server and includes several distinct fields. These fields typically include the client IP address, the username if the user is authenticated, the time of the request, the HTTP method and requested resource, the HTTP response code, and the size of the object returned to the client. It also includes the refer and the user agent strain. Now, I know those are a lot of fields, but we're going to pick through this log entry one component at a time to make sure that you understand how it works. But before we dive deeper into this log entry, I want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next IT certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new videos as they come out. This log entry comes directly from my web server, so it's a real access attempt that was made to my website. The only thing I've done is to change the IP address slightly to obscure the identity of the person who visited the site. First, here we have the IP address of the user who accessed my site. Again, I've changed this for anonymity, but in this example, the IP address is 202.70.100.211. Next, we have the host name. In this case, it's my website, certmike.com. This tells us which host the user was trying to access. Some web servers use virtual hosting to offer many different websites from the same server, so this host name field helps distinguish traffic coming into different websites hosted on the same server. After the host name, there's a dash. This field would normally contain the identity of the client, but that information usually isn't available unless they're logged in, so you'll almost always see a dash there. Here we have the timestamp. This tells us the exact date and time when the request occurred. The format is day, month, year, followed by the time and the time zone offset. In this case, it's coordinated universal time, or the time in Greenwich, United Kingdom. Most web servers use this time, abbreviated as UTC, to make it simple to coordinate log entries from different servers located around the world. Then we move to the request line. This shows the HTTP method used, which is GET, followed by the resource that was requested and the HTTP version. It tells us that the visitor asked for a specific page on the site using the HTTP protocol version 1.1. This particular page is a practice test question about penetration testing. Next is the HTTP status code, which here is 200. That means that the request was successful and the server returned the requested content without any issues. You might see other values here, such as 404, which means the requested page wasn't found, or 500, which indicates an internal server error. Other common codes include 301 or 302 for redirects, and 403 for forbidden access. These status codes tell you how the server handled the request. After that, we see the size of the response, which here is 20,731 bytes. That's a little over 20 kilobytes of data returned to the user. Now let's look at the refer field. 
In this entry, it's just a dash, which means that there was no refer. That usually happens when a user navigates directly to a URL by typing it in or using a bookmark, or when the browser strips out referrer information for privacy reasons. Normally, this field would contain the URL of the page that linked to the resource being requested. For example, if the user clicked a link from a search engine or another website, that site's URL would appear here. This helps site owners understand where their traffic is coming from. The next part is the user agent string. This tells us a lot about the device and browser used to access the website. In this case, it was an iPhone running iOS 18.4.1 using the Safari web browser. This is really useful for understanding the types of devices visiting the site and for detecting automated scanners or suspicious activity. At the end of the log entry, we see a vertical line. We call that the pipe character. That symbol marks the start of extended fields. These aren't part of the standard combined log format, but they are often added by content delivery networks, proxies, or custom server configurations. They provide extra information about how the request was handled or routed. What follows the pipe may vary depending on the server setup, but it can include data like TLS version, cache status, request handling times, and backend response indicators. These extended fields give deeper insight for performance monitoring and security analysis. The extended field that appears after the pipe here is TLS version 1.3. This tells us that the connection was encrypted using transport layer security version 1.3. That's the current version of the TLS protocol, and is considered secure and efficient. Seeing this in a log entry confirms that the server and client use modern encryption to protect the session, which is especially important when handling sensitive information. I hope this video helped you better understand web log analysis. If it did, please click the like button below to subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.